I am standing in my kitchen right now, obviously, because I'm gonna be showing you guys a mini kitchen reorganization video. Basically what I'm doing is going through my three main food storage areas in my home and trying to really organize them and utilize as much space as possible for food storage. Things that I use on a weekly basis and then things that I wanna have kind of a, a an overstock of. I'm really focusing on the three main storage areas in my kitchen, my what I call my pantry, even though it really isn't a pantry. Uh, the cabinet above my stove and then the Lazy Susan. So I'm gonna be showing you little bits of that. How I maximize the space as much as possible, how I am storing some food for kind of an extra backup supply and how I labeled everything with my Cricut Maker so that it not only looks nice because I love labels, but also whenever anybody else is in here cooking or putting groceries away, they know exactly where things go because everything is labeled with labels that I made with my Cricut Maker. So I will show you all of the organization. I will show you how I made the labels and everything. If you want to see that, then stay tuned. Okay guys, I'm trying to be quiet because the girls are still asleep. It's a Saturday morning and everybody wanted to sleep in. But before I got into working in my pantry and my Lazy Susan today, I wanted to show you kind of what we're working with. And I did a full kitchen tour. I've already done a pantry organization video and mostly the pantry is staying the same. I'm just trying to make more room for food storage because I don't like how this ends up doing this down here where things just kind of get thrown in. Um, and then also I'm planning ahead for fall and winter because in case we have bad weather, in case there's another shutdown, I just wanna make sure that I have a good stock of everything and I know where everything is and it's organized neatly. So all of our food in the kitchen, except for the refrigerator and freezer, stays in this pantry here keep a lot of food here in our lazy susan which as you can see is kind of a mess right now I have all the cereal down there cookies and crackers and chips and things like that all stay in here and there's something dragging in it this. so i really want to work on this and try to figure out a better way to organize it so that it's not repeatedly getting this way i'm definitely going to leave the cereal here i know that for sure um, but I need to kind of figure out what I'm doing and change things. And then also I have a little cabinet up here above the stove. I don't know that this is gonna change much or at all. It's mostly just boxed pastas, noodles, rice. There's some baking mix and pancake mix and stuff like that. So that's where that goes. So that is where all the food is stored in the kitchen. And I really just want to work on like I said, how to organize it better, fit more in the space and make it more organized. So this is where we're starting from and I will show you how it all turns out. Okay, so it's been a few days and I finally have the pantry and the Lazy Susan and the cabinet above the stove organized the way that I want them. I went ahead and wrote down all the labels I needed to make and the size of each label. And then I opened up Cricut Design Space and just started making those labels. It literally just takes a few minutes. I picked the font that I wanted and then once I had the right font, I just duplicated it every time to make a new label. That way the font would stay the same. And I do have the Cricut Maker. If you think you're gonna be just making labels, then there are some machines that are a little bit less expensive, but the Maker does so many more things than just labels. You can make t-shirts, you can make custom mugs, you can make bags, you can do all different things with a Cricut Maker besides just make labels. But I do tend to make labels a lot because I love for things to be organized and easy for me to know where things go and also when somebody happens to come in my house they know where things go if they're labeled so like in this case i even put gf at the end of some of the things i was making labels for so that if anybody else is cooking in my kitchen besides me they know which things are gluten free and so since my daughter can't have wheat that might be helpful so it's really nice to customize what you want your labels to say versus buying them on maybe Amazon or Etsy where they're not necessarily exactly what you want. You can do it whatever you want with your Cricut Maker. So once I had all the labels I wanted, I just went ahead and send it, sent it to the machine to cut in vinyl. It's cutting for me. It just takes a few minutes to cut and then it's time to weed off all of the excess vinyl that I don't need. It's my favorite part of the process other than the after.
Once I have all of the excess vinyl removed that I don't want, I just laid on a layer of transfer tape, which is basically how you're going to get your label from the Cricut mat onto the item that you're labeling. And there is one label applied and I'm going to go label all the other ones and then I will show you okay, the after. Here is what I call my pantry and everything is all organized now. There's still a few things I need to get for my stockpile to replenish. I have plenty of tomatoes and plenty of pinto beans, but I need to get some more corn and definitely some more green beans. But as you can see, this is pretty much the same system that I had with these containers. It's just I was able to combine some categories and that way I was able to get rid of this entire row that I had these in, which freed up this whole space right here for extra food. Because if you saw in the before, I was having a hard time having enough room just on the bottom for extra food so now i was able to take out that shelf that was there kind of have this big open area and then still have that area down there so i combined all of the beans so green beans are in the front and then i have just regular beans in the back different types of beans up here i have corn in the front tomatoes in the back miscellaneous will be for things like canned tuna or soup and then i have some chicken broth in the back but that's the miscellaneous section and as you can see i labeled everything so I know at a glance what I'm out of, or if somebody's putting the groceries away, they know where they go. So I had these containers already, but for me, labeling them just kind of took it up a notch and made it even extra organized. So I love the labels on there. And then like I said, I have this big area now, which is for probably cereal boxes and oatmeal containers, because those are pretty much the biggest thing that we have. And if there's ever a sale, I usually stock up and especially my favorite cereal back here. I eat every morning for breakfast quite a few times a year. The Kroger will do a, a, like a five times sale so it makes it a pretty good price. And so I usually stock up then. So if even if five cereal boxes, if it was down here, it would have taken up the whole area. So having this whole section here for oversized items is amazing. So cereal and then I have a bunch of the girls oatmeal containers because we go through oatmeal like crazy. You would think that they were horses. They eat so much oatmeal. So I make sure I had room for that because I get that at Whole Foods and we don't go there very often. So I usually get at least a couple of these every time we go to Whole Foods and they're big. So I take up a lot of room. So lots of room there. And then down here at the bottom, it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to kind of explain the layering process that there is. First of all, rule of organizing, put things in the very back or the highest that you use the least. So in the very, very back, I have like salt and pepper and things that I would replenish my salt and pepper shakers with. Don't do that very often because I don't use a whole lot of salt and pepper, but I have those back there. Um, I have some extra spices, some extra cooking oil, some, um, what's that called? Instant hot chocolate mix, just random stuff that I don't use very often. If you can see this white shelf back there, that is actually straddling the water pipe that is running next to our refrigerator which is right there and it's got kind of a janky valve which is in our foundation of our house and when we put the new flooring in and everything the guy was like this valve is a little bit janky you may not want to turn the water off and on too much or you may not want to bump into it with things and because i was storing food down here i was worried that something was going to run into it and the last thing we want to have happen is have to replace that valve because like i said it's in the foundation of the house this whole cabinet would have to come out there'd probably be some tearing up of the of the slab that we're on to get it fixed so it's really really important that it does not get touched so i found these little risers at dollar tree and i just kind of straddled them over top of that so i'm still able to use a little bit of the vertical storage but nothing is on top of or next to um, it may look like it is but it's not it, there's like some stuff here but nothing is coming close to that valve so i feel like that was a good way to still utilize a little bit of the space back there while protecting that wire um, and then back in front of that, I just have extra salad dressing. We have a lot of things that we use that quite require Italian dressing. 
So whenever there's a sale on that, my, my daughter's dairy-free dressing is back there. And then I have this little shelf, which is kind of the same concept as the white one. That's a little bit bigger. It is not very substantial. If it was not in a cabinet like this, I would definitely not recommend it for like plates or anything. But for light things, food and stuff like that, I think it's okay. Um, and it, it works perfectly in this space. I'll have a bunch of overstock pasta, a little bit of extra here, some more pasta there. And then I can set things on top. Right now I just have some uh, spaghetti sauce, but you know, you could put a few things on top here. And then to make room for the girls' chocolate chips because they put chocolate chips in their oatmeal, I just got this little hanging basket because they were always like falling over places and hard to find and crunched up. So having them here gets them out of the way of stuff down here, but makes them really accessible and kind of off on their own, which I like. And then above that, if you remember, it's pretty much the same. Um, I just went ahead and labeled where we keep our breads. And behind that is the chips bin. These are just Dollar Tree bins that I labeled. I showed you guys earlier when I made the labels. Um, and the chips used to be in the Lazy Susan. I never liked them there. They were always falling all over the place. So having them back there behind the bread makes sense. It's gonna keep them from getting crushed. Um, they're still accessible, but they're not like in the way. And then this really hasn't changed. This is where I keep all of our vitamins and supplements and things. In the very back, we just have some overstock, uh, like ice pack. We just have some overstock vitamins and whenever they're on sale, like I usually get, this is my oldest daughter's vitamins and my youngest daughter's vitamins. So whenever I catch them on sale, I'll buy a couple extra and they're back there in the back. I've got some ice packs and stuff, anything medicinal. When I showed my husband my labels, he's like, you should label this spinny thingy. And I was like, don't tempt me because I'm always looking for an excuse to make another label. And then up there, I just labeled our sugar containers. I have organic sugar and white sugar and I have tons of room in the back for extra storage. So if I ever wanna get um, overstock of flour or anything like that, any type of other basically baking supply or food, I can put it up there behind those. And then up here on the refrigerator, I'll pull that down and show you what's in there. I wanted a pretty basket that was decorative, so you wouldn't necessarily know that I'm using it for storage. If I really wanted to go like hardcore, I could put baskets up here, but I don't really wanna do that and I don't think it's necessary, but I have that basket from Target that I will show you what's inside there. So this is where I'm keeping these kind of, they're kind of like MREs, but not really. These are actually called camping meals. Um, they're not necessarily what my daughter with her allergies should eat, but this is only in an emergency situation. You know, if the grocery stores were closed or we're snowed in or, you know, something were to happen. This is like basically our emergency, we don't have many other options place. Um, and I like these, they got really good reviews on Amazon and they actually look pretty good. There are tw uh, 12 meals. 24 servings. So each of these bags is supposed to be two servings. There's a bunch of different foods in there. So beef stew, beef stroganoff, and I've got them one upside down, one right side up. So it actually utilizes the space a little bit better. They all fit in there perfectly. And I just have some extra um, sandwich bags, parchment paper that I use. And then down at the very bottom, I have my extra vacuum seal bags. My mom got me a vacuum sealer my mom and my dad. Um, I told her that I wanted one so I could start like vacuum sealing some meat in the freezer because it keeps getting freezer burned and especially if I'm gonna get extra meat to kind of store up for the fall and winter, it's gonna get freezer burned. So she got me um, a vacuum sealer and those are the bags for those. And everything looks so nice and pretty in this little basket, you would never know that it is holding so much stuff and use it and serving so much of a purpose. And then up here above the stove looks a lot the same. I just cleaned it out, labeled everything, and I showed you the labels that I made. So obviously the things that are gluten-free, um, that way anybody else is cooking will know that my oldest daughter can have those. And the last area is my Lazy Susan. I know most people use their Lazy Susans to keep cookware. I've never done that. I've always used food I've always put food in my Lazy Susan. My mom does that. I guess that's probably why I do it. But really, I can't imagine where I would put all this stuff. Like, if I used this for cookware or anything that wasn't food, where in the world would I put the cereal and the cookies and all that stuff? So, a lot of it stayed the same. I have these containers that came from Walmart. I've had them for a long time. Now, none of this stuff I labeled. It was tempting, I really wanted to, but we tend to change out a lot of what we put in here, the different types of cookies and different types of cereals. I didn't wanna label them because I know that we're gonna be changing them and then I'm gonna have labels on things that are not what's inside. So none of this stuff is labeled. Uh, we have cookies here, 
some little bunny grams here, some veggie chips, graham crackers, and then this little riser is from, I think Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond. What drives me crazy is when I did my Kroger click list, I meant to order another of my, like we use that my husband, my girls and I use the Kroger Simple Truth Organic Peanut Butter. Normally I get that size and it fits right there and it was perfect. And then I did a click list one day and for some reason I got this jumbo jar of peanut butter that won't fit right here. So just pretend that I normally, I didn't do that and this was the small jar because that is where it's supposed to live. Peanut butter is supposed to go here and then I have the girls chocolate chips here. Until we finish this one up, it's just gonna have to sit there, but just pretend it's not. Pretend it's small and pretend it's sitting right there because that's really truly where it belongs. And then I use the riser to utilize the um, vertical space because if you know, Lazy Susans are notorious for, you know, you put things at the bottom, you can't really put things to, to utilize the vertical space. So the riser helps with that. I have room here for a third one of these. These actually came from Dollar Tree. If I want to put it there, right now I don't need anything in there, but if I had different, you know, oatmeal bars or granola bars or anything like that, I could put one there and fit that there. But right now I just have candy and chocolate, oatmeal, um, like oatmeal cookie bars fit there. And then down here I have um, a container of instant oatmeal and cream of wheat that I like to eat sometimes. This little tiny bag of granola that needs to be finished and then we're not gonna get it again for a while so it's just kind of hanging out there but if it was something we got on a regular basis i would put it in a container like this but then we have all of these cereal containers from walmart we have rice krispies organic cinnamon toast crunch life cereal my husband's cranberry cereal my oldest daughter's frosted flakes my leap and lemurs and the girls oatmeal and they all just fit right there and are very very convenient every morning to make breakfast and then I just have a bag of marshmallows in the back and that is the food storage organization in here oh I do also have a container for saltines but I don't have any saltines right now but that is where they would go if I had some okay so that's it you've seen everything in here how I was able to reorganize the space that I have to work with to store food a little bit of extra storage I put above my refrigerator and how I made the Lazy Susan just like perfect for the food that we were already keeping in there, but just kind of reorganized it and made it a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. I will also link uh, the Cricut website in my description box if you guys are interested in a Cricut maker or any of their other machines. Like I said before, they have other machines that are less expensive. The maker obviously is I think the most versatile. Um, but definitely, if you're just interested in making labels, they do have machines that are a little bit less expensive and would make a great gift idea. So check out the link for Cricut in the description box. I hope you guys enjoy this video. It makes me feel really, feel really good that I have maximized all of the space that I can in my kitchen and I have everything ready for fall and winter. Just in case anything weird happens, I am prepared. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.